thing. But in fact, it turns out that now that we've proved this very generic fact, we can go back and apply it to an algorithm called Newton's method to find roots in a very generic situation with quadratic convergence. Right? So what does Newton's method do? I think a lot of people have probably seen this before, but maybe you haven't done the convergence analysis. Uh, let's say that I write down the Taylor series for f. Well, he is approximately equal to f of xk, right? plus f prime of xk times x minus xk. Right? So basically, I'm standing at a particular point, xk. Right? So here's s, here's our, our function f. Right? There's a, here's x, okay, and I approximate f with this tangent line, okay? So what I'm going to do is say that xk plus 1 is the root of that tangent function. Is that exactly the root of f? No, but it might be some approximation, right? And certainly when you're close to roots, this is a very good approximation. Huh? Well, one thing we could do is say, solve this thing for x to find, to find our next iterate. And in fact, when you do that, you get this formula here. Yeah. All this is is solving this, this equation for x. And we're going to find here to be xk plus 1. And this is called Newton's method. Now here is the cool thing. The reason we can go to all, the, the reason we go to all this analysis on fixed point iteration. Well, take a look. What do I want to have happen? Well, this is nothing more than fixed point iteration on this function that I've defined called g. Right? Why is that? Well, each time I just keep plugging in a new x and throwing it into this, you know, x minus f over f prime business, right? I just define a new function equal this in terms of that. What happens at a fixed point? Well, this is exactly a root. Because that's what, uh, that's what we showed. I right? at a fixed point, it says that I started a point, I followed the tangent line, and I didn't go anywhere. And the only way that can happen is if you're at a root. Cool. So in fact, Newton's method is nothing more than fixed point iteration on this function g that we've defined here. And we can actually analyze the, uh, the convergence rate of this Newton's method and show that it's very good. So to do so, let's say that we're searching for a simple root. Now notice this is sort of the opposite of what I was just talking about when we discussed fixed point iteration. Right? A simple root is one for which the derivative of f, now we're back to root finding, by the way, instead of finding fixed points, remember that. Right? And a simple root is for which, one for which the derivative at that root is non-zero. Right? So this says that I'm trying to find a zero of some function f, and uh, when I draw f like at this point, this look right here, uh, it crashes into zero in a not weird way. Cool? All right. And somehow the root-finding problem should be easier in this case, right? Because if, if you perturb a little bit, you're going to get very far away from the root, right? So you're going to kind of bang right into it. Remember our discussion of, uh, of, 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 of conditioning. So anyway, in fact, we can get quadratic convergence with Newton's method in this case. Let's, uh, let's figure what. Right. So remember that we define this thing uh, g of x, right? And he is equal to x minus f of x divided by f prime of x. And we claim that we're trying to look for fixed points of this guy. Yeah? And in particular, what do we know about g prime of x? Well, the derivative of x is 1, right? And let's see if I can do this right. So it's low d high, so that's f prime of x squared minus high d low. Drop the top and square below. Yeah. Did I do that right? I think I did. At least that's the wrong model in high school. Yeah? And there's the derivative of g. But in particular, let's uh, let's put all of this stuff under the same uh, denominator and what happens, right? Well you're gonna get an f prime squared minus f prime squared. Yeah? So in the end, this derivative is equal to f of x, f prime prime of x divided by f prime of x squared. Notice that if f prime is 0, like we're in a non-simple root, we can't do this because we're going to be dividing by 0 somewhere. OK, so what do we like this formula? Did I do it right? I totally did it right. Yeah. Well, what happens at x star? Well, f prime of x star is just some non-zero number. 
Same thing goes, well, this might be zero, might not. But in particular, at x star, this guy is zero. Yeah? Well, remember our condition for quadratic convergence of fixed point iteration was exactly when the derivative of the thing whose fixed point we're trying to find is equal to zero. And what did we just show? We showed that by construction, the derivative of g at x star is equal to zero because that's where the root goes. Yeah? So in fact, as long as we have a good initial guess of where the root should be, we know that Newton's method will converge quite dramatically to the solution. It is much faster than the, uh, than the bisection strategy. <coughs> What's the gotcha? The gotcha is that it does not converge unconditionally. In fact, the condition is, 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 is that you are sufficiently close to x star and that f prime of x star is zero, or non-zero. Cool? By the way, this suggests the potential for other root-finding algorithms. Remember, what did I do to derive uh, Newton's algorithm? Well, I erased it. I, I wrote down a first-order approximation of f, and then, I, and then I used roots of that first-order approximation to find the next iterate. There's a whole class of root-finding algorithms where you just write out down a big Taylor series, and you find his root, uh, and you use that for the next iteration. It turns out they don't behave a whole lot better than this. A little bit, but sometimes they can be very unstable. Okay, one issue, and then we'll start with it. The taking derivatives is hard. If you don't believe me, then you should, because of the emails that I'm getting from you guys about your homework. Um, so what do we do about that? Well, in particular, derivatives can be really hard. So let's say that I'm building a rocket, and, I, and I, every time that I, I, I want to optimize my rocket to have the best possible fuel efficiency, right? and I'm going to define that as the function that goes from the amount of, of gasoline that I put in my rocket to the height that it reaches after 17 seconds in a simulation with, with air resistance. Yeah? That's a function of f, right? It takes in a number, the amount of gas, and it, yeah, behind the scenes, f might run an entire rocket simulation and solve Navier Stokes without comes some number, which is how high your rocket went. And you might want to try to find a root or a maximum or a minimum of this thing. But the derivative of that function, right, the height of your rocket after a whole simulation, with respect to the amount of gas you put in, is a really complicated derivative. There are so many chain rules. And it's not even just that we're lazy mathematicians. It, it might actually be that, that this derivative is very inefficient to compute. So the question is, can we do something like Newton's method, but rather, but, but, but do so without actually computing any derivatives of the function f? And the answer is yes. And this is called the secant method. So the idea of the secant method is that we look at the past two iterates. Right? xk and xk minus 1, we use those to define the next, the next guy, which is xk plus 1. And the way that we're going to do it, so let's say that we're doing root finding, I keep drawing the same picture. And here are the last two iterates, yeah? is that I'm going to draw the secant between these two points instead of the tangent line and find his root. That's the only difference between the secant method and Newton's method. Right? And the nice thing is that a convergence method is uh, the, uh, proving that this method converges. Is, a, is outside of the scope of this class, unfortunately. It is obvious that it converges if you start very close to the root, otherwise it's a little bit tricky. But your trivia fact of the day is that the convergence rate is somewhere between linear and quadratic. In fact, it is the rate 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Anybody recognize this number? It's the golden ratio, right? So people get very excited about the secant method because it's somehow deeply related to faux science that people like. Um, right. So anyway, uh, yeah, so to conclude our discussion, finally, one thing you might ask for is that you want the convergence rate of secant or Newton or what have you, uh, but you want the convergence guarantee of bisection, and one reasonable question is can you combine these two algorithms in some way? And in fact you can, these are called hybrid methods. So a very reasonable hybrid method is something called Deckard's method, where what you do is you still give it that left and right endpoint, just like before, and now you're going to run either secant or Newton, right, from your current iterate, which might be the midpoint or something. And then if the next iterate that you get using secant or Newton is inside of your bound left to right, then you use that for your new point during bisection. And if it lies outside of that range, then you say, well, I don't even know there's a, there's a, I don't even know there's a root out there. I don't have any guarantees. So I'm going to ignore that, bisect my interval, and try again. Right? So these sorts of strategies have a slightly better convergence rate without losing the guarantee that you have to reach a root. Hopefully that makes some sense. And there's some very complicated ones that try and do this without sacrificing convergence rates. Decker's method actually can have some very bizarre uh, cases where it takes forever to converge.
So anyway, yeah, our conclusion is we're unlikely to be able to solve roots uh, exactly, so we're going to have to settle for an iterative method, and our job is to show that it converges at all to a root. That is, if we just keep hacking away and finding better and better approximations of our root, that we're going to eventually come to what we want. We saw a couple different convergence rates today, right? We saw bisection was a linear algorithm, right? Meaning that it was linear in the previous error to get the next error. We saw that uh, Newton's method is quadratic, and in fact, uh, your trivia fact of the day is that the secant method is somewhere between quadratic and linear, so we call it super linear. One important consideration you should make when you're using these algorithms, this is the same as the eigenvalue stuff. Remember we talked about these matrix shifting methods for eigenvalues? We, we said that the, the, the shifting methods converge more quickly, but the problem is that each iteration of that algorithm has to solve a different linear system, so things like LU factorization don't apply. Right? So there's this funny trade-off that each iteration might be slower, but the total number of iterations you might need to get to a root within some bound is smaller. And so when you do the engineering side of all of this analysis, you should look at the time per iteration as well as the number of iterations it's going to take. Cool. So in our, le our next lecture, we're going to discuss uh, how to take these methods to functions that are not just in single variable. Uh, and then we'll move on to optimization, which is a humongously, humongous topic, and we'll only scratch the topics. So if somebody could hit the camera. Uh, that'd be great. I have about half hour, 45 minutes after class, about four minutes. Yeah. Yeah.